بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سورة الكافرون is a Meccan surah by consensus and it was uh, revealed after and ma'un and before Surah Al-Fil. The reason for revelation is as reported by uh, Al-Tabarani, classified as sound by Al-Albani, is that Quraysh, and this is reported by Ibn Abbas Quraysh, uh, became disturbed regarding the da'wah of the Prophet Wasallam, and they wanted to bargain with him. They wanted to meet midpoint somewhere with him. So they called him and they said, uh, if you're after wealth, we'll give you from our wealth and you'll become the richest in Mecca. And if you're after uh, women, then we can give you the choice of women and you choose the best and the most attractive and we'll uh, give her to you. And if you're after leadership, we'll abide by your word, we'll make you honorable and glorified amongst us and you'll be leading. And in return, you need to stop being offensive and insult our uh, idols uh, and stop mentioning them in, uh, with anything, anything that's uh, evil. Uh, and if you refuse this, then we have another proposal for you. The proposal is that you worship Allah and Al-Uzza one year and the following year we will worship your Lord. So the Prophet وسلم, said, give me time until I see what I receive from my Lord. So Ibn Abbas said, so revelation came from Allah Azza wa Jal from the preserved template. Allah Azza wa Jal said, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ until the end of the surah. Now, there is one important point here that we need to highlight before we get into the surah. Uh, the Arabs and particularly the Quraysh, uh, they were not denying the existence of Allah and that Allah is there. And that Allah is the creator and the provider. If you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they would say, Allah. When in the incident of the, the uh, elephant, their statement was, لِلْبَيْتِ رَبٌّ يَحْمِي This house has a Lord who will protect it. So, the point here is that the Quraysh knew that Allah Azza wa Jal or believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. But their problem was in one of the aspects which is believing that Allah Azza wa Jal is one and only. He is self-sufficient. He is not in need of anything. And that all worship is to be for Him. All sacrifice is to be for Him. The divinity of Allah Azza wa Jal was their problem. As well as some of the names and attributes of uh, Allah Azza wa Jal. What made things worse for them is that they thought when they saw the people of the book attributing a son the Jews said Uzair is the son of Allah the Christians said Jesus was the son of Allah or is the son of Allah and they knew that this is false so they thought that they were upon the faith of Ibrahim and they claimed that the reason they worship these idols that they have is none but a means to reach Allah Azza wa Jal. As Allah Azza wa Jal told us about them, they said, "Ma na'buduhum illa liyuqarribuna ila Allahi zulfa." We only worship them as a means to bring us closer to Allah. So, based on this conviction. 
they thought that the distance between them and Muhammad وسلم, was not far. He's calling us to worship the Lord of Ibrahim. Well, we follow Ibrahim, so they claimed, right? The, the difference between us and him is not too far, is not too, too big. So we're not too far from him. So therefore, we can have a dialogue with him and meet somewhere in the middle, come to terms and meet somewhere in the middle. That's why they said one year for us and one, one year for you. It's like, you know, when you go and bargain with someone, you know, how much is it? Well, this, well, okay, I'll give you this. Now, that's not how it works with, when it comes to worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. It has to be full servitude, full submission. There is no middle way, some here and some there. Anyway, so Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the surah. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ Say, O oh, disbelievers, قُلْ قُلْ is a command from Allah Azza wa Jal to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say what comes after it. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that whenever he heard that قُلْ there is an instruction he must abide by, things that he must convey, things he must clarify firmly, without reluctance. And he was never reluctant, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, nor did he hide any of the revelations he received from Allah azza wa jal. And as the scholar said, this command is telling him to say firmly and with certitude and with uh, firm feet on the ground that you. Ya ayyuha, qul ya ayyuha, I am addressing you, and you are kafirun. You offer me one year here and one year there, you want to marry me, your, your, uh, your ladies, give me money, give me leadership, you are disbelievers. Allah described them with the reality. So as to remove this ambiguity in their minds that we are upon the faith of Ibrahim. No, you're not. You are kafirun. You are disbelievers. Some of the scholars of tafsir said that this was uh, revealed pertaining to three uh, uh, particular people, Al-Walid ibn al-As and uh, Ibn Khalaf and Al-Aswad ibn al-Muttalib. Uh, but we'll talk about the generality of the verses and we can also address this particular case as well so what should he tell them after he exposed their reality to them and disclosed what he believed about them to them you want a bargain well first of all you must know that i believe that you are disbelievers you're not upon anything. لا أعبد ما تعبدون. I do not worship what you worship. Since you are polytheists, you were idol worshippers, you associate with Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, the result is that I cannot meet midway with, with you. We don't have a common ground. I do not worship what you currently worship. I worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. I have monotheism. I have Tawheed. I single out Allah Azza wa Jal for my intention in worship. So we don't have a common ground for dialogue. وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدْ and nor are you worshippers of what I worship. Now, you don't worship what I worship. You worship idols. So, your deity is this idol that you bow to and you ask favors from and relief from. Mine is Allah. Wala ana abidum ma abattu. Now, nor 
will I worship what you worship? Now, what's the difference between this verse and the verse before the, the second verse in the surah? Right? The difference is, as the scholar said, he was telling them that in the first one, I don't worship what you're worshiping now. In this one, he said, I will never worship in the future what you're worshiping. So the first one, now we're different. The second one, we will always be different in the future. So there is a difference between them in one sense. But they are identical in another sense. What is the sense of uh, them being identical? Is that it confirms that whether it's now or later, I will never worship what you worship. Nor will you worship what I worship. Again, in the future, confirming that they will never. Now, in, a partic in the particular case of these three, it is because Allah Azza wa Jal knew that these three people in particular will never believe and will die as uh, idol worshippers and therefore go to Jahannam. Lakum deenukum waliya deen. For you is your religion and for mine, uh, for me is my religion. One way of understanding this is you will see the consequence of what you're uh, worshipping. Lakum dinukum. You will see the recompense of what you're doing. The worship, the type of worship you're doing. Waliyadin, and I will see the consequence and get the recompense of what I am worshipping, which is the true ilah, the true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, this concluding verse confirms what was stated and repeated twice to confirm. You notice that this uh, surah is con confirmation upon confirmation upon confirmation. Five different verses all confirm the same meaning, the same concept, the same theme. And this is how we Muslims should feel. We Muslims should feel this, believe this, act upon this we are not like any other faith we cannot compromise there is no such thing as reconciling between different faiths how can you reconcile between islam and another faith that sees you as a hell inhibitor in the hereafter and you see him as a person who's going to hell how do, you, how do we reconcile between us who say Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Allah doesn't have a son, Allah doesn't have a wife and with other faiths who attribute a son to Allah how can these two contradicting facts be reconciled? It is not possible. لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ This is a call for us as Muslims that under pressure do not give in. Don't give up things in your faith in order to relieve some of the pressure off you. Or perhaps I can make some people happy or not make them angry at me or at us as a community. And therefore, I can, you know, soften up a little bit. It is decisive. It is definite. There are no two ways about it. This is decided by Allah, not by anyone else. Not even by Muhammad Because when Muhammad was asked, as the narration said, he said, wait until I see what I get from my, from my Lord. From, from Rabbi. And then this was the answer from Allah Azza wa Jal for him. So Allah Azza wa Jal, by this surah, made Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam give up any hope in these three in particular to become believers. 
and in anyone who persists and insists to remain upon his falsehood, to have any dialogue, any common grounds with them. And also made the disbelievers of the Quraysh lose any hope of perhaps maybe Muhammad وسلم, would give up something and then we can come to an agreement with him. Uh, just a couple of things about this uh, surah. The, the, one of the virtues of the surah, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi classified as sound by Albani and narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. The Prophet وسلم, said, whoever recites, Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, this will be equivalent as reciting one fourth of the Quran. Okay? So it is as if you've recited seven and a half chapters of the Quran or juz from the Quran. Okay. Now there are certain uh, times when uh, it was reported that the Prophet ﷺ recited this during Salah. The Prophet ﷺ used to recite this, this surah during different prayers. Uh, one of them is during the first rak'ah of Sunnah al-Maghrib, the Sunnah after Salat al-Maghrib, and this is uh, reported by Ahmed classified as sound by Al-Albani, and uh, the first rak'ah of the Sunnah of Salat al-Fajr, and this is reported by Muslim. And in the second rak'ah of the Witr, okay, uh, and this is reported by Ibn Majah classified as authentic by Al-Albani. And before going to sleep. And this is reported by Ahmed, classified as sound by Albani. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you lie down, going to sleep, recite, Qul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun, and then sleep after you finish it. For it will be, this avowal, it, it, be, it will be a declaration of innocence of shirk for you. So with this, we will uh, conclude the surah uh, and we'll open the grounds for question and answer session afterwards, inshallah. Subhanakallahum bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu alik.